Hello everyone, this is David from Automotive Press and I want to talk about a very important topic today and that is why is Toyota canceling the Land Cruiser for the US and are we getting something close to that in the form of uh, the new Sequoia? What is going on and why can we just not get the Land Cruiser back in the US because as you know from the debut just a few days ago it's an amazing SUV with the world class capability and we want that right here back in North American soil. But here are the reasons why we are not getting the Land Cruiser back in North America and perhaps it may never come back to the US but at the same time it might not matter because we're going to get something very close to the Land Cruiser in the form of a 2023 Toyota Sequoia. And I have done a full rendering of what that Sequoia might look like as you can see right here. So let me tell you all about the story behind the Land Cruiser versus the Sequoia for the North American market. So it has been a really fascinating week because all of us have been watching the release and the debut of the new 2022 Land Cruiser and it's been an amazing, amazing introduction. We're so excited for the world about the Land Cruiser, but we are also a bit sad because it is not coming back to the US market. It has been canceled. Now, is there a possibility that it could still come back in a few years? There is a possibility, but I will tell you why it is going to be very difficult to convince Toyota to ever bring that Land Cruiser back. And it comes down to a very simple thing, economics. Now, if you are a regular viewer of my channel, you already know about my background because I worked for Toyota and a number of other automotive related companies. And I talk about these things as an insider versus an outsider. So hopefully I can share with you some interesting insight today, but it comes down to the numbers. Toyota is an amazing, amazing company with a big vision. In case you didn't know, their newest vision is to create happiness for all. So amazing and beautiful, beautiful vision. But it is still a public company with a responsibility to be profitable and to basically make economic money for the shareholders. So let's look at some of these numbers. I'm going to start with the Tundra, which we have been talking about for a while the truck that we are anticipating to come in the next couple of months or so. So that uh, Tundra have sold reasonably okay, not anywhere close to the North American sales of Ford F-150 or Chevrolet or GMC trucks, but we did sell a hundred, close to 110,000 units in the calendar year 2020 in the US and in Canadian soil, we sold about 11,000. Typically, Canadian sale is about uh, 10% of the US sales. That looks about right. If you look at the Sequoia, significantly less. Sequoia sold only 7,300 units in 2020. These are all 2020 sales. And then in Canada, a shockingly small number of 500 units in calendar 2020. But here's an interesting thing. In 2019, Sequoia sold much better, close to 10,000 units in, in the US. But because of chip shortage, and other changes, obviously, it's being affected. Uh, what about the Land Cruiser, where here is where the numbers begin to reveal itself. Land Cruiser only sold 3,200 units in the US in 2020, and it's not sold here in Canada. It hasn't been for a while now. So we are looking at less than half of the Sequoia sale, and Sequoia sale is typically around 10,000 units per year. So it's actually really about one third of normal sales of the Sequoia. Interesting enough, in 2021, this year, between January 1st to May 31st, 
Land Cruiser sold almost the same amount as all of 2020 because I think people are just uh, upset or anxious that it's no longer coming back to the U.S. and they started buying it. So there is an art artificial bump in sales for Land Cruiser for 2021, but typically we're looking at about 3,000 units per year in comparison to about eight to 10,000 units of Sequoia. So Sequoia is already economically very low and at the border of being canceled. But because Sequoia basically shares its platform with Tundra, they can kind of, uh, they can kind of balance out economics between the two models. Whereas, whereas Land Cruiser is a bit more different from Tundra than compared to the Sequoia. So you can begin to see the, the market here. Now, just for interest, Forerunner sold 130,000 units in 2020 in the US and even in Canada, it sold 16,000 units. And I've got some other number here too. For example, the Highlander in 2020 sold 212,000 units and in Canada it sold 16,000. So you can see when we are talking about sort of uh, 50,000 units to 100,000 units, it is economically viable and Toyota has no problem uh, marketing it and investing into that model and making, making it fully, fully available. But when it begins to hit below 50,000 units per year, it's already a question mark. And then even for a niche model such as the Land Cruiser, when it goes below 10,000 units, that's when the, uh, the board members and senior executive begin to question, why do we spend all that time and energy to bring it to that country if it doesn't sell very well? So even though Land Cruiser is a beloved unit that all of us would love to own, the honest truth is that it just doesn't sell very well because it's a pretty expensive model and the pricing is not all that different from the Lexus LX. So they actually sell more Lexus LX than the Land Cruiser on an annual basis. So when you begin to look at the strategy, it, it, you can now see why Sequoia makes much more sense to the North American market than Land Cruiser. It, it's much bigger, it's a full-size SUV, which is a hot market right now in competition with the likes of the GMC Tahoe. So this is a growing market, it's a hot market, so Toyota can invest into this model and the 7,300 to 10,000 units of sale per year will grow. I just know it's gonna grow to 15 to 20,000 units, maybe even more when the new model finally comes out. So that's why the Sequoia will survive and the Land Cruiser will not survive. Now, if you look at the Land Cruiser sales in other countries, the Middle East, Australia, it sells in far, far greater number than the US. So it's really hard to blame Toyota for canceling Land Cruiser for the US. But here is the great news. The next generation Sequoia, which you can see my rendering right here, is really a grown up version of the Land Cruiser. And the reason why is because the new Tundra coming up in the fall, the new Sequoia coming out in about a year from now on, and the Land Cruiser, which has already uh, released, these three all share the same new platform called the TNGA dash F platform. So they share a similar chassis, a similar powertrain, suspension, and transmission. By sharing similar components across three models, Toyota can lower the cost and improve the economics of the marketing and selling of these models. So these three uh, vehicles are not as different as you think. Now the whole concept of TNGA-F platform and engineering goes deeper than just the sharing of the components, but let me just explain to you in a very simple terms. So trucks and SUV for Tundra, Sequoia, and Land Cruiser, and eventually the new 4Runner, which is com also coming out in about a year, all share a similar uh, undersize. So here is a very simple toy consisting of the frame, uh, and the frame contains all of the major components, which is the engine, the suspension, and transmission sets on top of that frame. And then the body shell goes on top. When you peel away the actual physical body underneath these models, and eventually the new 4Runner as well, are going to be very similar, more similar than you think. So sure, we call it Tundra because it's a pickup truck, and we call it Sequoia because it's a big SUV, and then the Land Cruiser, which is a little bit more compact and designed for true off-roading. Sure, we've got different branding and different name, but underneath, as far as engineering is concerned, it's more similar than you think. Basically, same engine, 
same transmission and then all of the other things like tires and wheels are also basically identical spec there might be some changes in terms of the tire size and the way things are calibrated will be different for engine and transmission the way it shifts and so forth and particularly the ride will be configured differently because these three models will have to ride differently and the weight is different but other than that it's really just the name especially the new generation Sequoia and the new generation Land Cruiser share more common parts than ever before so we are really getting a new Sequoia that is like an uh, overgrown Land Cruiser. Maybe it's not quite as tough, maybe it's not quite tuned for off-roading and heavy-duty use like the way Land Cruiser is, but it's going to have the same engine, which is a 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6. I like to call it 3.4 because it's actually uh, 3.444 liter, but uh, Toyota calls it 3.5, so I'll just keep on calling 3.5 for now. It's got the identical 10-speed transmission, which by the way applies to the new Tundra 2, and the suspension components are also almost identical. Um, so what is the difference between Sequoia and Land Cruiser? Well, Sequoia is going to be quite a bit bigger. It's going to be a full-size, truly full-size, three-row SUV uh, in the much the same spirit as the Tundra which is a full-size truck and it will have a whole different look and feel from Land Cruiser my best guess is the rendering again I'll show you here and I what I did was use the um, rendering of the Tundra which I have been working on for many many months and I used that front end with a nightshade uh, look and feel with a dark element and I added that to the Sequoia body but with major modification because I think some of the design cues from the Land Cruiser such as the way the wheel arches and the body is curved I believe those look and feel will carry over the new Sequoia so my rendering shows the kind of a Tundra front end with a mixture of a new Land Cruiser and existing Sequoia design features and I think that is very close to what the brand new model will look like. The new Sequoia will come out about a year after the Tundra comes out. Tundra is coming out no later than September of this year uh, with a delivery by December to January uh, in our dealership and so it'll be about the same for Sequoia but exactly one year later. I think by summer of next year we will see the new Sequoia and then by September it will be fully fully released and by December of 2022 the new Sequoia will be delivered to dealership as a 2023 and it's going to be really a carbon copy of the Tundra plus the SUV body which essentially means it is the grown-up version and a larger model of the Land Cruiser. So I hope this video was helpful in understanding how engineering and components affect these products and how much similarity there are among these models. And perhaps if we cry enough, if we are loud enough, maybe Toyota USA will bring back the Land Cruiser to this shore, which is still very possible. And I would really encourage you to make comments below and tell Toyota you want the Land Cruiser back, that you will buy one if they do bring it back, and I will maybe consolidate all those comments and send it directly to Toyota head office and see how they will respond. Perhaps if we make enough noise, they will bring it back. So you want to buy the Land Cruiser, but we can't buy it anymore? Well, buy the Sequoia and take the Sequoia label out, put the word Land Cruiser on it, and honestly, it's going to be pretty similar. Uh, of course, once we have a chance to drive the new Sequoia and the Land Cruiser, I can tell you exactly what the differences are, but I can pretty well imagine, based on my engineer experience, how much difference or similarity there will be between the two models, and it's not going to be as much as you think. So that's the story behind my view of the Sequoia versus Land Cruiser. Of course, we're all still patiently waiting for the Tundra reveal, uh, which should happen in the next couple months or so. More news to come to you. Thank you for watching and uh, signing off for now.